Hey, what's up, Facebook lovelies? How are you t today, this morning? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, so this is your girl, Epiphany Tanya, and I'm just popping on here. Let me see if I take off my glasses. It might be a little better. <laughs> um, just popping on here because I wanted to share some writing tips with you guys today. I hope you enjoy this video. Um, I want to share some writing tips. So as I've mentioned before in previous videos, I am an author. I have four, not one, not two, not three, but four books. Um, so this is one of my books, Misunderstood. Um, Misunderstood is a book that is based on my life story. Uh, true story. Um, now, sometimes for the entertainment purpose of the book, you may... Um, it's almost like you're using your imagination because some of these things, like it kind of spans the time of, um, I was age 10 to age 21. So for those years, and I won't tell you how old I am now, by the way, but for those years, like I may not remember every detail that happened, but, um, sometimes you fill in the blanks of things you kind of imagine or you think Okay, well, if I had a conversation with this person, how would that conversation go? Um, so you may fill in some things, but so sometimes I say loosely based on my life because there are some creative uh, things that I use in this book to um, interest the reader. You want to pull your reader in. So sometimes just saying, well, I did this and I did that. It can be kind of boring for your readers. So you want to give them a little bit of variety. It's almost like going to a buffet versus you just go somewhere where they're only serving one kind of food. How boring that could be. So you want to give your reader a variety of uh, experiences. Um, another tip and thing that I'll tell you guys is that when people pick up your book, they're really looking for an escape. People, Most people are looking for an escape from life, right? So... You're helping them escape from their own reality world into your world, even though you could be writing about true life things. This is why reality TV is so popular because, you know, yes, it's reality, but it's someone else's reality. It's not mine. So I can escape into someone else's reality. I can escape and that becomes my own fantasy or my own, you know, just escape route. So um, you know, some people do drugs, but, you know, a better alternative would be a book. A better alternative would be, you know, TV or, you know, watching TV. I mean, anything in excess can be bad. But, um, you know, this is a way for us to kind of escape out of our own world, to um, immerse ourselves in someone else's world and to have those experiences with that. And sometimes, you know, you can go on a roller coaster ride of emotions, whether it's laughter, whether it's tears, sadness, joy. Um, and that's what you want to do with your book. You want to give people an experience. Um, this is something I was sharing with one of my coaching clients just uh, yesterday that we want to experience your, your life. We want to experience your world through your eyes. And we want to really feel like we were there. You know, so the thing about books, you know, unlike television, where you have that visual picture with books, you want to draw a picture with words. You're using your words to draw a picture for someone in their mind where they can literally imagine what it was like, what it felt like, what it smelled like, what it tasted like, what it looked like. And so that's why I encourage um, my clients to use a lot of descriptive words um, if this is something you struggle with, you may want to get a thesaurus. You may want to get something that helps you get more words in your vocabulary, get more varying words. Because again, you want to create a buffet. So you don't want to like keep using the same word. You don't want to keep saying uh, something was pretty or you don't want to keep saying something was blue or you don't want to, you know, you want to find other ways to describe things. Um, you know, you don't want to keep saying it was excellent. This was excellent. That was excellent. It was excellent. Uh, you know, and you just keep repeating like we can get away with stuff like that in regular life. Or even I was telling someone poetry. Poetry is a place where you can kind of repeat yourself. You know, if it if it serves the poem, if it serves the audience, and it serves you know who's listening, um, that's it's almost like a soothing effect of repeating. But in books, you don't want to repeat yourself too much. The only time you you use um, repeating yourself very sparingly, you only do it to make a point, and you may spread it out. Like okay, if I have a ten chapter book. 
Um, maybe something from chapter one may get brought up again in chapter five or four, something like that. And then again in chapter nine or 10. But I'm not going to keep saying the same thing, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. You're not going to keep repeating yourself. You will bore your reader and they will put your book down. So you want to um, bring variety in there. You want to change it up. For me, I'd use a lot of creative techniques in order to do this in this book. Um, one of the things I did was I created multiple voices in the book. I created, I had a narrator as well as I had the point of view of the first person. Um, a lot of people that read this book say how well written it is. And I believe the reason why they believe it's so well written, I mean, not like I'm not a good writer, but <laughs> I think it's because I really stepped outside of the book to tell the story. Like, I don't think there's anyone that can read this book and tell that the person who it happened to is the one writing the story because that's how far I was able to remove myself. And that's just a technique that you can use sometimes, especially if you're telling an emotional story, a painful story, um, you can find ways to remove yourself. And this is something that I studied um, actually in school and college. So some of my professors gave us these techniques that you can use because um, my life has been a very tumultuous, painful experience um, in my childhood. I had a very rough life growing up. So it was very difficult for me. And I didn't know how I would ever write a book about my life, even though I knew that I was called to write a book um, about my life. I didn't know how to do that because of the emotionality of it. It's almost like you feel like you have to go to therapy first before you even could write the book because it's that much level, you know, it's that level of emotion or pain. Um, but I was able to use certain techniques. Sometimes I did have to step away from the book and I had to like take a break and take some time or just cry it out or whatever I had to do because it just got that real. Um, but I think that if you use certain techniques, like you can actually, so here's one technique and it's, there's so many, but one is telling the point of, telling the story through, through the point of view of someone else that was there. So let's say if you and your brother experienced um, a situation so maybe you would tell the story through his eyes. You're not going to necessarily tell it through you and say, I, this or I, that. You may be like, you know, like you're him and just try to imagine being in his shoes and what he saw and what he felt and what he did. So it's kind of like you're removing yourself, but you're still, you know, you have that familiarity of the story. Some of the best stories are actually based on true stories because it's that much more realistic that things that happen um, really did happen that way. Whereas though, you know, a lot of times in fictional writing, you know, they're trying to create these characters. They're trying to make these characters believable. They're trying to build these characters up. Well, if you use aspects of your life or you use aspects of people you know, um, someone that's really good with this, Tyler Perry is one, because he always talks about he's a lot of the stories he tells or somebody he knows. So if you use those types of stories, um, you know, kind of loosely based on them, of course, you don't want to get sued. But um, if you use those, you can, um, it's just more realistic because, okay, this is a real life person that this happened to, or these are real life characteristics of a person um, doing those things, you know, whereas though a fictional character, it's just hard to give them that three-dimensional feel of, you know, not like a cardboard surface, no depth, no character person. Um, and really skillful writers that write fictional stories are, you know, they have so much experience doing it, but I still feel like a lot of them have taken their characters from somewhere in their life and they've just tweaked it or turned it some kind of way. They made him an alien. I don't know. <laughs> they, they took that that mother-in-law that they couldn't stand and they made them into an alien in a science fiction book. I don't know. But, you know, I feel like there are creative ways that people use real life in order to make their book more interesting. So, again, you're trying to pull a reader in. You want to use a lot of descriptive words. Um, a lot of times with my clients, I will give them a list of questions and we want to go through who, um, what, when, where, how type of situation you also want to do. Um, what did they look like? You know, what color was their skin? What was the complexion? What shape were their eyes? What length was their hair? What color was their hair? What texture was their hair? Was it coarse? Was it thin? Was it fine? Um, what, you know, what are some of their mannerisms? What's something to stand out? Do they have really long fingers? Do they have, they have a big nose? Do they have, like, you know, what are some of their traits or characteristics, uh, physical features, um, personality traits? Um, you know, I don't know, maybe they're always humming or they're somebody that shakes the chains when they walk in their, you know, the pocket. Just give them these 
these um, characteristic traits that make it more real. Um, so anywho, so that is uh, some of some techniques that I just wanted to share with you guys as far as writing goes. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else because it seems like it's a lot that I could share with you about this. Uh, so dialogue. Oh, so there's another thing. When I talk about the variety, you want to change it up. So you, you might have a narrator in there that's kind of telling the story of, you know, what happened. But then, you know, you want to put dialogue throughout. You know, you want to have nar narration, dialogue, narration, dialogue. You want to kind of balance your book with that because just reading a narrated, somebody just telling you this happened, that happened, again, could get boring. So if I have some dialogue in there, I jump in there with some conversation between two people um, that can spice it up and that can make some interest for your reader, changing it up a little bit. Um, what else? So you got narration, dialogue. Um, you have to figure out what point of view you want to tell your story from. You know, this narr is it first person, second person, third person. Um, so again, the first person would be if I'm telling the story, I did this, I did that. Um, the third person is the narrator. So that's this outside perspective that's coming in and they're saying, um, Susan walked down the street, you know, so they're telling you what happened from an outsider's point of view. Second person, um, it's almost like self-help does a lot of second person. So it's like, I'm ta like, I'm talking to you now. That's kind of like second person. Like I'm talking to you. Hey, you, this is, so if I wrote the book, like I'm talking to the reader, that would be second person. So Anyway, so these are just some tips. Um, another thing I see a lot of authors do is they come, they get uh, lost in the tense of like, what tense did this happen in? Did this happen past? Did it happen present? Or did it happen in the future? So even your wording. So if something already happened, I would say, I went to the store. If something's happening now, I am at the store. If something, I'm going to the store. So that's that past, present. So your words will reflect. So, I, you know, sometimes you see where people write, and it's like, I went to the store, I am at, you know, I am at the store, I went to the store, you know, like it's, they're mixing up that tense. And it's like, I think because there's so much going on in your mind, when you start sit down to write and you have all these ideas, you can get, you can lose sight of that. Like what time is this happening? Has this already happened? Happening now? Going to happen. So try to keep that in mind as you write, like stay in a certain tense. So if you're in the past, Stay your right, let your writing stay in the past. If you're in, if you're talking about present, let the writing reflect that it's present time. But try not to mix the two up. Not unless, I mean, I guess you, there probably are some examples somewhere of people have done this successfully, but it's, especially for beginning writers, it's very um, dangerous and it will lose, you will lose your readers because they will get lost. So you want to keep them flowing with you. Um, yeah, you want to keep them going and flowing with you and not um, lose them. You know, you want to keep them interested, you want to keep them excited. And so anyway, I want to read a little bit from my book. I was um, using this example yesterday to show um, when you want to make a certain point about something, sometimes it's good to not do such an overview, but you want to take like, if you're using your life story, you want to take certain pivotal moments from your life and not try to tell every single detail or thing. Not even the Bible had everything in it. So you want to just take pivotal moments. So for me, I wanted to convey my introduction to Christ and the Lord um, in my life and how um, I came to know him in a sense. So I couldn't tell you that whole story because it's, it's more to it than just this part that I told. But this kind of gives you some idea of like my beginning time when I was really young and how I um, first got, you know, came to know the Lord and got introduced to the Lord. So this, this section of the book, which is in chapter five of Misunderstood, is called Going to Church. The seven grandchildren, which included the four teens and three younger children, all scrambled to get up and get ready for church. Vincent and Kenny, the only two boys in the house full of women, gathered up their blankets and folded up the sofa bed in order to rearrange the living room back to normal. The girls also got up, folded their blankets, and made their beds. Then they gathered their clothes, which Selma insisted they lay out the night before. She was famous for making them shower or bathe before going to bed. So that in the morning, all that was needed was a quick stop to the bathroom sink to freshen up. She figured this was the best way to handle eight people all living or all having to share one tiny bathroom. 
Selma stayed on her grandchildren and nagged them about things like personal hygiene, cleaning up behind themselves. And the kids often made fun of her high-pitched crackling voice as they initiated or they imitated her unusual sayings with regards to this. Vincent was the main ringleader who made all the other kids laugh with his impressions. Don't forget to wash your monkey, Vincent would mock in a similar high-pitched voice and all the other kids would fall over hysterical with laughter. Selma constantly stayed on Vincent, who she suspected didn't like to wash. She nagged and basically harassed him for as many years as he stayed with her. Her voice could be heard throughout the house asking, Did you wash your monkey, Vincent? Don't forget to wash your monkey, Vincent, and other variations of the pet nickname inquiring about the cleanliness of his private area. This morning was no different as she nagged and fussed at Vincent and the other children to get ready. Selma made sure all seven of her grandchildren got dressed and ready. She hurried them out the door to meet Mr. Presley, one of the deacons from their church. Every Sunday, Mr. Presley would pick them up in his big black Cadillac at the corner of their block, 76 in Ogons. He gave them a ride to Child's Memorial, Selma's church in North Philly. All the kids looked forward to riding with Mr. Presley. His car allowed them to make believe that they were being chauffeured in a big black limo. Toya, in particular, liked the way her satin ruffled dress caused her to slide across the leather seats every time he turned a corner. Selma would send the kids off early with Mr. Presley so they could attend Sunday school. She would stay home and continue to get ready only to arrive at the church later. The church was packed. Beautiful large hats of every color design sat stylishly upon many of the older women's heads. Little girls wore beautiful lace and ruffled dresses with white stockings, black patent leather shoes that buckled on the side. The men wore dark colored suits with white dress shirts, colorful ties, and matching handkerchiefs. Toya stood at attention with the rest of the church as grandmothers and mothers hushed voices and the music began. The soft sound of the organ seemed to cause the church to sway and rock back and forth as the head deacon's fingers pressed gently but firmly on the keys. The voices of the choir could be heard in the hallway echoed through the voice of the choirs could be heard in the hallway and echoed through the speakers. But where are they, thought Toya, as she stood on her tippy toes in order to better survey the sanctuary. She could hear their voices, but couldn't see them anywhere. Hosanna, belted a deep, rich, baritone voice right before the choir chimed in with, Blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. The baritone voice repeated his part, Hosanna, followed by the choir. Blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. The church made up of young and old, both men and women of every shade of brown skin, marched their way through the double doors and down the two center aisles stepping to the beat. Robes swaying and flowing behind them, they marched in procession all the way to the choir stand before taking their spots in front of their seats. They harmonize, Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised, trailing off at the end. Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Then they repeat it in harmony. Hosanna, blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. People danced, clapped, and shouted, but most just sang along, feeling the spirit. Toya felt the warm feeling deep down in the pit of her stomach, like she was being filled up with some type of mildly hot or warm gel on the inside until she couldn't be still and had to clap her hands, sing along and rock from side to side. She may have only been 10 years old, but she knew she didn't want the feeling to end. So that is, that was called going to church. And um, it was a section within chapter five. So that's another thing that I did with this book. I did a lot of sections within the chapters. Um, one section is called grandmom's house. In chapter five, what else do we have? Um, the separation um, was another part or, or chapter or section rather in chapter five. So we had the separation, grandma's house and going to church are all, it's like three sections that were in that chapter. Um, 
So I think next time when I come on, I may just do another, you know, do different pieces of the book just to give you some idea. Like I want to, you know, give some examples of the descriptions. Like, you know, if you, if you notice in that section, I talked about the little girls and the patent leather shoes that buckled on the side. See, anybody that remembers those shoes, <laughs> it's like it draws a picture for you. You can literally see those shoes in your mind because the description of patent leather, black, buckle on the side you know we all remember those shoes most of us had to wear those shoes to church so <laughs> so the more description again um the choir robe swaying you know it wasn't just choir it wasn't just like oh they had robes no it was choir robe swaying so you see that description of it's the it's the item the robe it's um you know a part of something about the robe it wasn't just any robe it was a choir robe we know what those look like and then the choir robe swaying now, if i really wanted to go deep i could have been like the satin choir robes swaying um the blue satin choir robe swaying you know what i mean like you're giving as much description about that robe that one piece as possible because you're drawing a picture for people in your mind in their mind rather um so yeah, so that's just an example. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, as you know, I will mention it again that um, I'm an author, Epiphany Tanya. LaTanya Richardson is my author name. You can look me up on Amazon.com. Um, I have four books, Sister Issues, Misunderstood, that's this one, um, The Marriage Purpose, and All the King's Daughters is the latest one. So I would encourage you to go on Amazon. A lot of times, Amazon has a look inside where you can go and you can read a first uh, few pages or chapters of the book and get an idea of if it's something you're interested in. So I would encourage you to do that, to type in my name in um, any one of the books in the in the search and um, pull it up that way. Um, I'm trying to think. It seemed like it was something else I wanted to share with you guys. Oh, and the publishing. So I'm doing publishing, coaching, and promotions um, services that I'm offering for aspiring authors who want to get their books out into the market. Um, I'm here to help. I would love to help you with that project. Um, ghost writing I do. Um, for some people that just don't have time to write a book or maybe they just don't feel like they are a talented writer. Um, I just got some great feedback last night. One of the clients that I'm working with doing coaching. Sometimes I throw other services in there. And even though it's coaching, like really technically he's getting editing too. So I did some rewrites for him and different things that he sent me. And he was saying like, oh my goodness, I'm so excited. Like this book is so good now. And like you really helped it. You brought it. You breathed life into it. So, you know, this is just, I give all praise and glory and honor to God that blessed me in this area of writing and I love it and um you know I don't know I can't explain it to you it's just a passion and I enjoy helping people now to be able to put their books out there too so um Christian authors you know make sure you inbox me if you have a project you have a book idea you have something in your heart stirring in you you know you want to write that book you know you've been hearing the calling feeling the pull for a long time to write the book and you're just you've just been sitting on it and now is the time so um i just pray that you would be led to message me and that you know we can um form some type of mutual um beneficial relationship that helps you to produce that book that you've always dreamt about so again epiphany tanya thank you guys for checking out this video and i hope you enjoyed it and i look forward to the next one and i you know let me know in, your, in the comments like what you thought you know as far as the book and the part that i read you did it seem like something that jumped off the page at you like you'd be interested in um i actually have a section in this book where uh this girl toya i'm not gonna say who that is um she sees somebody get shot. So, um, and this is again, real life stuff. Um, so I want to next time, hopefully I'm going to tune in. I will, uh, next video, I'll try to read you guys that part about the, uh, shooting, which I think is called, uh, let me see. I think it's called gunshots and go-go spots. Ooh, that sounds interesting. So <laughs> I'll talk to you guys later. Love you. Nothing you can do about it. Go be great on purpose. This is your girl Epiphany signing off.